This is a video for preliminary work for assignment 6.1 and I'll be going over the preliminary work for the criterion P1. We're going to be doing things with prefixes, percentages and converting units, imperial to metric and vice versa. Question A is about converting numbers out of a prefix. So we're given a number, it's got a prefix, we need to write it without the prefix. B is doing the opposite of that. We've, we're given a number without a prefix, we need to write it with a prefix. For these tasks, you'll need to use the table at the top of the question sheet, which tells you what you need to do if you're converting out of a prefix and what you need to do if you're converting into a prefix. Prefixes are down the left and the second column shows you how to convert out of a prefix by multiplying or dividing by a certain number and the last column is if you want to write it um, with a prefix, so you, you're given the number without a prefix. Right, let's do question A. We've got a distance 27 centimetres, so if I call this part one. I need to write that without the prefix. This is the prefix, the centi, this is the unit. So we've got prefix and then the unit. So I want to write it without the prefix. That means I need to find the numerical equivalent of the centi. So to do this, I'll write 27. And if I look on my table here, centi is the same as divided by 100. So divided by 100, and that will equal 0.27 meters. You can see that the SI unit for distance is written already, so you know what the unit is. That will help you identify what the prefix is. Question two. 6,030 microvolts. I want to write that without prefix. This is the unit here, V. So this is the prefix, micro. Now you need to be careful with the micro, don't confuse it with mega or milli, they're all different. Me micro has the Greek symbol mu. Okay, so that's different to milli, which is a lowercase m, and mega, which is an uppercase m. So they're all different, you need to make sure you look up the correct one. Now I'm doing micro here, so I look down here for the mu, the micro, that's divided by 10 to the 6. So I do here 6,030 divided by 2, 3. And that will come out as 0 0.0063. Volts. So that's the answer written without the prefix. Number two, and number three rather, I'll do number three down here and then I can do B on the board over there. Uh, 45 meganewtons. So capital M, that's my prefix, that's mega. When I look up on the table, then it's 10 to the 6. So what I need to do is 45 times 10 to the Six or forty-five times one, two, two, one, six zeros after it, so I get forty-five million newtons. Right, so that's the prefixes for A. Just got to remember to be systematic. Identify what the prefix is. Look it up on the table. Then multiply your number by that. Now I'm going to convert out of the prefix and into, um, sorry, out of the unit and into a prefix with the unit. So now B part one is 3,460 joules. So that's the number. Now you need to be careful here. You're given the unit with a prefix, so you need to look over there for what the prefix is. So I need to convert this into kilojoules. So uh, I look, I did, I, 
identify the prefix, which is kilo. Kilo is times by a thousand if you're converting out of it, but we're, you know, we're converting into it, so it's the opposite of that, it's divide by a thousand. So, divide by a thousand in this case, so it would be 3,460 divided by a thousand, and that would give me 3.46 kilojoules. Question uh, number two, charge. And for charge, we are given 0 0.084 coulombs. No, coulombs C, capital C is the unit there. The prefix is milli coulombs. Sorry, uh, the prefix is milli. The, the unit given to us is milli coulombs. So now, milli, if it means 10 to the minus 3, but we're converting into it, so we need to multiply by a thousand. So 10 to the minus 3 means divide by a thousand. This, but this, because we go the opposite way, it's times a thousand. So 0 0.084 times by a thousand gives me 84 million kilos. And lastly, given the power, 500 watts, we need to convert that to kilowatts. 500 watts, convert that to kilowatts. So K, same as above, divided by 1000. So we do 500 divided, sorry, divided by 1000, and that equals 0 0.5 kilowatts. So we've done our conversions there into prefixes and out of prefixes. Right, so question C, we need to convert 5.1 feet into meters, and we're given the conversion factor, one foot is approximately equal to 0.3 meters. So we're converting feet into meters, and we're given one foot equals 0.30, so 5.1, the length, is 5.1 times by the conversion factor here, 0 0.30. So when we do that, we get 1.5 times 1.30, 1.53 meters. Okay. And then, so then, once I've converted it into meters, I might then be able to answer an additional question about whether that 1.53 meters is bigger or smaller than another metric dimension. So that's my answer there for C. For D, we're doing the opposite. We need to convert 55 kilograms, which is a metric measurement, into stones, which is the imperial measurement. We also need to give our answer to two significant figures. So we're given our conversion factor here. Notice the imperial measurement here, one stone, is what we're conver converting into. So rather than before, where we multiplied by the conversion factor, now because we're converting into the imperial measurement, we need to divide by the conversion factor, which is 6.35. So the mass is 55 divided by 6.35 in this case. So when we do that, we would get 8.7 stones if we write it to significant figures with anti-calculator. Now it's just giving it a unit so uh, and writing it to the correct SF, so that's something that's important for P1. Now we'll do question E, where we're going to start doing some fractions and percentages. Let's do E up here. Six out of 20 students are female in a physics class. Express the result firstly as a fraction, and then as a percentage to 2SF. So we want one a fraction. The fraction is going to be 6 out of 20, means 6 over 20. Now, we could quite state it like that, but that's insufficient. We need to simplify that so we can divide top and bottom by two, I can see that. 
we get 3 over 10. I can't do any further simplification with that, so that's how I'll leave it. That's my fraction. Then I need to show, uh, show it as a percentage with two significant figures. So 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3, but it's the two significant figures. So that 3 is my first significant figure. I then need to add a second significant figure. So if it's 0 0.3 exactly, then the next one would be a 0. So 0 0.30. Um, but this is percentage, so I need to multiply it by 100 as well. So 0 0.30 times 100. So it's 30%. Okay. That, that's my answer there to 2 sf Okay. I, I guess I was overcomplicating it there by adding on the, uh, the extra zero. You can just multiply by 100 in one step, of course. F for F, I'm going to clear the board, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, but question F, we want to work out 38% of 72. There's two ways you can do this. You can do 38 divided by 100 times by 72, or 38 times 72 divided by 100, you can do that. Um, but if you appreciate that 38 divided by 100 is 0 0.38, you can just do 0 0.38 times 72. And that would give us 27. So, because we're working out 38% of 72, this number 72 that doesn't have any units, so this doesn't have any units either. But if it was 38% of 72 kilograms, then we'd need to give those that unit there as well, or 38% of 72 grams, it's 27 grams. So that's quite a straightforward one. Just take the percentage, divide by 100 times by the number that you want to work out the percentage of. Question G, 60 kilogram person is composed of 39 kilograms of oxygen. What's the percentage composition of the oxygen to two significant figures? So for this, we're going to do 39, which is the mass of oxygen, divided by the total mass of the person, which is 60, multiplied by 100. And so for that, we get 65%. And we're equating it to two significant figures, so that's fine, two significant figures are there. If it's 3SF, then it would be 65.0, I assume it's 65.0. H, that's a H, fraction of percentage of oxygen in nitrous in nitrogen dioxide. So we're given the chemical formula here. We're, we're, in the question we're also given the mass number. So nitrogen is 14 and oxygen is 16. And we wanted to give our percentage to 3SF. So the first thing to do, work out the fraction. The fraction is the total amount of oxygen divided by the total mass of the molecule. Now the amount of oxygen, there's two oxygen, so it's going to be 16 times 2 divided by total mass, which is going to be 16 times 2 plus 14, or 14 plus that. So. Now, 16 times 2, that's 32, so we get 32 over 32 plus 14, so it's 46. Let's check that in that 46. Yep. We can divide both of those by 2, so we get 16 over 23. We can't simplify that any further, so we'll just leave it like that. Part 2, we need to work out the percentage to 3SF. So what we're going to do, you can do 16 divided by 23 on your calculator, multiply it by 100. And when we do that, we should get to 3SF, that's 69.6%. So 
we will give that extra decimal place there. So that's our, those are our answers there for H. And the last question is I, 64 is increased by 15%. So what's the new value to three significant figures? To work this out, we do, well there are two ways you can do this as well. You can do 15% of 64, so 15 over 100 times by 64. And then you work that out and that's uh, 9.6. You can then must remember to add that on to what you started off with because it's increased by 15%. So it's going to be 64 plus 9.6 is 73.6, hopefully. And that's correct, 3SF. The other way to do it is to take 115% and multiply that by 64. You take 115 divided by 100, so that's 100% plus the 15%, and then multiply that by 64. With 115 divided by 100 is 1.15, and you should get 73.6 directly. So that's correct to 3SF as well. So those are the questions for the preliminary task in P1. If you've got any questions, then just ask me, and we'll go through those again for you.